This video is brought to you by TubeBuddy. When it comes to wireless gaming mice, there are two names that rise to the top of the discussion. This is the iconic G Pro Wireless and the newer Razer Viper Ultimate. Yet even with these new upgrades, the G Pro Wireless is still top of class in my opinion, and I'm going to show you why right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back and I hope you're doing well. The reason for making this video is because I realize a lot of my content has been budget based and when people ask me what the best of the best is, I haven't really made a dedicated video about the G Pro Wireless or the Viper Ultimate for that matter. For those who don't know, the G Pro Wireless is hands down the most used mouse when comparing pro lists in games such as Fortnite, Valorant, and Overwatch just to name a few. There are numerous reviews out there already about both of these mice, so I'm going to gloss over some of the finer details and just work on the pros and cons that I've found over the last 10 months of using these mice. Anyways, this is my review of the Logitech G Pro Wireless and Razer Viper Ultimate, shall we? First off, let me address the fact that I've previously stated that the Viper Ultimate was my favorite. At the time, this was 100% true. However, things have changed. There are three areas in which I believe the G Pro Wireless is now superior, which is shape, button layout, and quality control. Before we get into the main points regarding these mice, here are some basic specs for people to keep in mind. They're both ambidextrous with right or left-handed capabilities, very high DPI sensors, and a lightweight design. Looking at the shape first, as you can see from this side shot, the G Pro Wireless is taller and has a shorter length overall. The Viper is longer at 131mm while the G Pro is around 125 this means it's more rounded from the side as well as when looking from the rear. It stands at around 41mm while the Viper Ultimate stands at around 39 The width of the Viper is also around 61mm while the G Pro is skinnier at 60 I believe this slightly larger curve of the G Pro fills at the hand much better as compared to the Viper Ultimate. When looking at contact with the mouse pad, this makes it much better in the way that it lifts the base of the hand off the surface. It also has less contact with the pinky and the ring finger rests. The second area in which I think the G Pro Wireless is better is the buttons. This term is broad, and I think that the main triggers and the side buttons are better on the G Pro Wireless than on the Viper Ultimate. Regarding the main triggers, the Viper Ultimate has what they call optical switches that were designed by Razer themselves, whereas the G Pro Wireless uses Omron 50 millions. We'll do a sound test now, and then I'll explain more. As you can hear, the buttons on the G Pro sound and feel like they have a much more pronounced actuation. Along with this, they feel like they're slightly lighter and a much more pleasant feeling click. The clicks of the Viper Ultimate are slightly heavier and have gotten mushier as the time has progressed. I'll talk about this much more in the quality control section. The side buttons are another area that I do not like as much on the Viper Ultimate. They're much more flush with the shell and are harder to differentiate between. The ones in the G Pro Wireless have a nice curve in them and are really nice to use. They're much easier to differentiate between as well. Another aspect of these side buttons I don't like is the fact that the Viper has them on the right side as well. It's fantastic that it's an ambidextrous design, but I noticed that they get in the way of my ring and pinky finger. Also from time to time, I'll click them in accidentally. They aren't mapped to any functions, but it's just kind of distracting. The G Pro Wireless on the other hand has an ingenious design I think. It comes out of the box in right hand orientation with these flat inserts that are on the right side and go unnoticed when using it. If you want to switch it to left handed mode, all you have to do is use these modular inserts to convert it. The whole mechanism is magnetic so it's really easy to do with a pair of pliers. I don't think I can speak for everybody, but I think this way is better than having permanent buttons on each side. The third and final area in which I think the G Pro Wireless is better is that of quality control. Razer has sometimes been known for their quality control problems in the past, but they have been making improvements overall. The Viper Ultimate, however, showed a lapse in these improvements, I think. The first area of quality control problems is that of the triggers. When I first got the mouse, there were very nice clicks to it. They now have gotten mushy and there's a bit of a creaking sound to them, however. The other big issue I had with quality control in this device is that of the charging base station. When this docking station is working, this is a very nice feature because you can easily just set the mouse on it and it'll charge it after you're done using it. The charging dock stopped registering with mine, however, 
And it wasn't just me. There are numerous reports on Reddit of this happening, as well as some other videos on YouTube of this happening. Not a great look. Another area is that of the rubber sides. These were great when I first got it, and don't get me wrong. But now it's just not as grippy and doesn't feel as good over several hours of using them. The size of the G-Pro is definitely something I prefer now with its drier matte plastic feel to it. Looking back on quality control, these three areas of switches, charging dock, and side grips were the three main areas I noticed to be flawed over time. As these are both gaming mice, let's look at their in-game performance before I mention some of the redeeming features of the Viper Ultimate. Got him. I'm not going to pretend like the Viper Ultimate isn't a great mouse. If you were to get either of these, you'd be in a great position. The biggest thing I noticed when using the Viper was how low profile it was and how nimble it was when you held it correctly. The 20k DPI sensor is also great. It's really easy to be able to flick across the mouse pad and track new targets. But again, the side buttons are really noticeably hard to use and this was the biggest downside in game I thought. The G-Pro Wireless shines because of its comfortable shape and easier clicks. When you upgrade the skates as well, it easily makes it as nimble as the Viper Ultimate is. The side buttons are also outstanding to use for such things as melee or replacing armor plates. My version is a 16k DPI sensor, but the newest and updated version is a 25k DPI sensor which is insane. I'm not really sure how much of a difference that'll make. As usual, I tested both of these mice live on my Twitch if you ever want to come through. Let's go! All hope is not lost for the Viper Ultimate as there are several areas that I must concede as being superior to the G-Pro Wireless. The first is being the stock skates. It comes with stock skates that are 100% PTFE and have a great glide to them. The stock ones in G-Pro Wireless are called 250KM PTFE. These are not that great, hence the reason why people upgrade to Ultra Glides like I did. These are only around $14 on Amazon which makes it an easy choice. The weight of the Viper Ultimate is also lighter at around 74 grams versus 80 grams of the G-Pro Wireless. I don't really notice the difference too much, but to some people, it might make a difference. Similarly, the battery life of the Viper is around 70 hours, which is much greater than that of the 48 hours of the G-Pro Wireless. The charge time on both of these is quite fast, but I did notice myself having to charge the Logitech much more often. But another area that the Razer is better is in that of the charging dock when it's working. I know this has been very unfortunate for it to stop working for some people, like myself, but if Razer made a V2 version that had improved performance and quality control, this would be fantastic. It has a cool LED strip that surrounds the base, and it is a nice little illuminative feature to sit on the desktop. And of course, the ease of use is great. Overall, these three areas of shape, buttons, and quality control aggregated together makes me have a preference toward the G-Pro Wireless. There are some redeeming features that will make people prefer the Viper Ultimate, which is totally fine. These are just some of my opinions and my findings over the last 10 months. If you're interested in either of these, the Viper Ultimate is around 150 new and the G Pro Wireless is around 130 right now. These prices fluctuate a little bit, but if you're interested, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to check them out and it would help support the channel at the same time. Thank you guys again for watching and I hope this helped you in some way. These are two iconic mice and I'm glad they finally found a way onto this channel. Before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is something that I use every day. It's a free browser extension that integrates directly into YouTube and allows you to get ahead of the game with its keyword analyzer, in-depth video analytics, and many more. These are just two of my favorite features and they're basically a cheat code for YouTube. I personally use the star version which is $20 a month. This may seem like a lot, but the views I've gotten on several of my videos made it more than worth it. Start crushing it on YouTube today with TubeBuddy. If you'd like to support me further, you can check out my copyright-free lo-fi playlist on Spotify and Apple Music. These are free for you to use on Twitch and on YouTube without the worry of any DMCA copyright strikes. But when you do so, I get a fee and it helps me run and grow this channel. Some of the music you actually heard from this video was in that playlist, so make sure you go check it out if that interests you. You can also catch me on Twitch where I test products live on stream a couple times a week at least. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully catch you next time.